Hello, YouTube fans and Instagram Cities Illustrated fans. Um, today, I am going to be playing some more Simutrans. And in this video, we are going, I'm going to be talking about um, air travel in Simutrans. Uh, it's kind of overlooked, I think, and I just want to um, just show you how, it's, how it works and how uh, interesting it is. Uh, like what kind of networks you can create, what you can do and cannot do with it, and other things. So right now, um, I am playing on an already created map. I was playing this a couple weeks ago um, where I was going to try and connect this. Here, let me turn off the networks. I was going to try and connect this um, island region um, with a single hub in the middle using airplanes. And I'm starting in the year, uh, I started in the year 2000. And just, um, like I said, I'm trying to connect all of the cities in this really, like, island region. You know, maybe it's kind of like the Philippines. And I'm just, uh, it's all centered on this airport right here. The um, main city is called Little Yefold. And I have my airport right here. Let me turn off the uh, convoy numbers so you can see the airport better. Um, so this is how you turn it off. You go to, um, to see all the little line numbers here. I mean, those are very necessary when you're playing, but it just kind of looks a little messy. But just to show you like what it actually looks like without the numbers, let's go to um, vehicle display settings. I don't want this to be a hallmark of my videos where I'm always messing around with the display settings, even though I don't remember exactly how to do it. Okay, convoy tooltips names always always show all. Let's never show. And then we'll change that back in a little bit. Because I just want to show you my cool airport. Um, let's click on it. When you click on, as always, if you're new, um, when you click on uh, a station, a station can be an airport, a, uh, a harbor, like a ship port, a bus stop, bus terminal, train station. Well, I'm just going to refer to all of them as stations. My airport has um, bus lines. Well, I'll show you exactly what it has. So we'll go to... Um, Details, we click on the station, we click on details, services, so truck, buses, means buses. I have three lines, trains, I have three lines, and uh, there's uh, one, two, three, seven air routes. Um, it's all one airline, it's all my airline. I control all of these um, services. So there's seven air routes from this um, airport, from the main hub. You can see how many convoys are a part of each line. So for each of my train lines, only has one convoy, only has one train running on each line because the, the lines are relatively short. Some of my air routes have five airplanes operating on them, and the bus lines have about an average of 10 or you know, so. And what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be um, going over how the air transport system works and how to expand an airport and how to build a new airport. We're going to be opening a new air service and I will show you exactly how it's done. So first of all, let's let's speed up the game a little bit and I'll show you a little bit of how of what the airport looks like when it's operating. So in the later years, if you speed up the game too much, it starts to really lag because um, the game is simulating, is beginning to simulate uh, private car travel. As you can see, like over here, there's all these like little cars buzzing around and the game is, and all these cars actually have real destinations in the game. Like if we manage to click on one, it's a Ford Focus, it tells you the speed, it tells you the origin of the city, and then it tells you the destination. Um, some storage tanks. It doesn't give you the coordinates of the destination, but it, they actually do have destinations. So these aren't just like filler sprites. These are real um, simulated um, lines that have a real destination. So here's the airport. And so like I was saying, um, the game begins to lag a bit because it's simulating all this stuff. So we're just watching the airport. The airplanes are... Um, if you hover your mouse over, you can tell it tells you how long it'll be before they depart. So that these are all departing at the same time. 
pretty cool. And of course, the pink bar right here, it tells you how many passengers are waiting. And so if you click on the airport, it'll tell you how many are, are waiting in each line. The lines um, are numbered by default. So this is line seven, there's 184 people waiting. And, but you can change the names of the lines. It's just kind of, you know, kind of cumbersome. But if you wanted to, you could, um, so here's line seven. It shows you um, what airplanes are serving that line. And if we look at the line, we can see what airport it is from Little Yelfold. That's the main hub right here. And it's going to Warren Font Hall Airport. And if we click just to the left of the arrow, just to the left right there, it'll take us to that airport. It'll snap over there. So this is Warren Font Hall Airport. And so we have some planes loading right here. And the, this, this airport, Warren Font Hall Airport, serves um, maybe like this kind of, this side of the island. So it serves about like three or four cities and the bu and it's served by bus lines. So the buses come down these streets and um, they stop at the airport. They, I have a bus terminal um, built right here. And so the, the buses pull in there, drop off their passengers, pick up passengers. And like, so if we click on, to, um, to click on the actual airplane, we have to click once, it opens the airport tab itself, and then we click again and it um, actually opens the details of the convoy airplane that uh, the tile you clicked on. And so this, it shows that this airplane has 49 passengers on board out of 70, so it's 70% full. And right now it just landed at the main hub, it, um, it docks, passengers get off. Right now it's full and it still has um, 20 minutes left, which means that there is um, a large demand. There's a uh, demand that exceeds capacity on this line. So it would be ideal if we built more airplanes to serve this line. And what would be better is if we um, bought some better airplanes, like larger, faster airplanes, because this is... Um, an ATR-72, all the airplanes in here are real airplanes, which is really cool. If you're a air travel nerd like me, all these airplanes are real and they come in real airplane liver, uh, liveries. I think that's what it's called. So if, let's see, let's go back to our main airport and let's consider um, upgrading this line. Let's start with that for this video because this is a very popular line. So it's line seven, um, line seven, most of the sea, when we click on the line, it shows the five airplanes that operate the route, um, and most of them are full. And so if we buy some bigger airplanes, it will help us by, um, uh, for one, maybe we won't have to have as many airplanes flying the route, which will open up capacity at the main airport, which would be ideal. Because right now, um, it's some of the airplanes um, have to uh, wait to land because only one airplane at a time is, of course, allowed on the runway. Even though I put two runways, it's the air, the airport, um, I don't know, the air travel, whatever, is not perfect. And so they won't always land. They won't always use a runway that's open. Sometimes they'll all have to line up for one runway, even if the other one is open. And I think it has to do with what direction they're coming in. So, if, so all the airplanes coming in from the left side of the map will use this runway. Um, the top runway, the one on the left, and then everything from the bottom will use the bottom runway. So um, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. There's no other game really like it. So, you know, you get what you get. And also the airplanes will cl will pass through each other on the taxiway, which is, you know, whatever. So uh, I was going to upgrade my, uh, that line. So line seven, Let's start by, so if we, on, on um, line seven in the uh, line management tab, there is a way to replace the vehicles. I don't exactly know how it works. I've tried it before, it kind of worked. I'm not sure, I don't really wanna try to explain it because I'm probably gonna get some stuff wrong, but I'm gonna do um, this other the more straightforward way, which is simply to just buy new airplanes and then place them on the route manually, which isn't very hard. 
and does not take up a lot of time. So let's pick which airplane we want. We have a lot of choices. So one, the first thing we have to consider is let's go to the, so this, our main airport is totally fine. We don't need to do anything here. So let's go to the other airport that is being served, the, the small airport. Okay, and let's look at what kind of runway it is. So it's a Tarmac Adam runway. Um, the, it, the maximum weight right here, that's something we have to consider, is 15 tons. And so the airplane, in the um, airplane hangar, when we're purchasing new airplanes, it'll tell us the maximum weight. So, uh, so if we wanted to buy an Airbus A321, the axle load for the runway, sorry about that, when it does that, that means the the um, the month just turned over and an airplane is no longer available or a new airplane has been added. Because some of these are kind of old, like the, I don't know, there's an MD something and maybe you can't buy it anymore. But we want maybe a, a larger airplane, like an A320, but the axle load is 25 tons. And right now the Tarmac Adam runway that this airport uses is only 15 tons and so what we're going to do and i know for a fact that um sorry um so airport we open the airport tab air transport tools there's the there's four types of runways there's a grass runway which can only have up to five tons there's the tarmac adam runway which this airport uses right now that is 15 tons. Then the next one is an asphalt runway. And that's 400 tons. And then there's a concrete runway, which is also 400 tons. Um, and the difference is the concrete runway is much more durable. So after, a, so if we click on a runway tile, it'll show somewhere on here, it'll show the durability. And once the, the enough um, airplanes land on this, then we will have to start paying a renewal cost. So it's kind of just like, it's like basically if you build your runway out of a higher quality material, it'll cost more, but you will have to, but in the long run, you will pay less. So let's just upgrade it to a concrete runway. And what I was going to say earlier, I know for a fact that the A321 has to have a 3000 meter runway to land. And so right now, our runway is only 1875 meters. So we will make it longer and it'll tell us exactly how long it is right there in the blue box that follows the mouse. It says it'll give the estimated cost and then at the end it'll say the length. And so right now it's 3000 meters there, 3000 meter long runway, which is, uh, which is what we need. So, and also we have to upgrade the taxiway. So we'll use the concrete taxiway. We'll just kind of drag it over the taxiway I'll show you how to build a new airport later, but that's just what we're going to do right now. All right, so now let's go back to our main hub. Right now, let's turn on the networks button. Right now, it's kind of hard to see, but we are in the um, lower uh, lower right-hand part of the screen. If you open the map, there we are at the Warren Front Hall Airport. It's a good distance from our main airport, and as you can see, um, with the lines tab, with the lines or the network overlay turned on, it shows us all of the um, lines that are operating. So this, these straight lines are the bus network and the dashed curved line is the uh, actual air line, the, the, air, the line operated by airplanes. So um, we're gonna go back to our main hub in the center of the map, which is where our hangar is and we're gonna pick a new airplane. So we have a lot of choices. What we're gonna consider is we're gonna think about, um, we wanna have a variety of classes on the airplane. So in Simutrans, you can build convoys. Convoys is just another word for vehicles, whether it be water, air, land. We're gonna choose a convoy, or sorry, convoys all have classes that range from very low to very high. So you can think of it like, you know, EasyJet Spirit Airlines is going to be very low. And then like first class, 
um, is going to be very high. And so some of these um, airplanes have three classes. None of them have very, oh, this one has very high, the Boeing 747. Um, that has a very high class. It has, it has a low, high, very high economy, business um, uh, first. But we don't, I don't think we need a 747 right now. But we, let's pick a A321 that has two classes. So right now, all of these A320s, oh, okay. These, these jets, at the, at the, the bigger jets in the beginning of the list, those are all completely uh, very low class. So these are all like budget airline, EasyJet, Ryanair, Spirit Airline type um, jets where they're configured for a, the whole airplane is dense. They have 186 seats. This one has 186 seats, all very, uh, very low class. And very low, of course, attracts more passengers, but it's um, less comfortable. It'll tell you a time um, next to the class. So it says 186. I can't um, highlight it, but it's in the it's in the stats. It's on the right hand side, um, just a little bit down from the intro date. It says capacity 186 passengers, 186, 186 passengers, all in very low class, with a happiness of an hour and 50 minutes. So if the if the flight is less than an hour, 50 minutes, everyone will be happy. And happiness is a good thing to consider. It's not very important, but it is something to consider. So what we'll do is let's pick, let's pick the A321, 236 passengers, all in very low class. And let's get, and we'll put it on line seven and we'll put, let's get two of these. And um, yeah, so let's, um, let's get two of those. And then let's click um, uh, this button where it says Convoy 2 of 2. Let's click it to the left where it says, and then it'll become new convoy. So right now we already have two airplanes ready for, um, for ready for, to serve line seven. We have two airplanes ready and let's, and they're all, they are the, sorry, I'm so sorry guys. All seats on those airplanes are very low class. So let's buy another airplane that is like kind of higher end for, because there are people that will, only use the service if it has like a uh, first class or a business class because they are like wealthier um, simulation citizens and they will only use the network if it if there's an option for a high class travel. Um, so and and maybe they don't all they won't only use it but they will use it if it's available which means you will make more money if that service is available because you can, of course, charge more for first class. So let's pick the 737-900ER. Um, the minimum runway length is 2,900 meters, and it has low, a low class, which is like regular economy on like Delta, and then, a high, and then a first class. So 165 seats in economy and 12 in first. 737-ER, we will click it, and then let's set it to um, line seven. Oops. And we can just click this button. Oops. Until we get to seven. Oops. Okay. Um, yep. And let's get three of these. So I clicked it three times and now we have a total of five airplanes. All of them are much larger than the previous, um, than what we have previously, which is these uh, small, very small ATRs. Now what we will do is we will withdraw all of the ATRs. So we have to keep our airplanes that we just bought in the hangar, don't start them yet. Now withdraw all, and it withdraw, it's gonna withdraw all the ATRs and then we will start all of our new airplanes. And so you can see, let's slow it down a little bit. They all just left the hangar and they are all stacked up 
on this tile. You can see there's a bunch of them stacked up. Normally when the airplanes are landing, they will go to any available spot on the apron. But since these are brand new out of the hangar, for some reason they all stack up on one spot. So let's just click on this line seven airplane. Okay, so it's, so yeah, 165 people on board, 12 people in first class, the rest in economy. That's great, it's already full. Now let's speed it up a little bit and let's follow the airplane. Okay, so it's going, it's taxiing. Okay, uh-oh, we have a problem. It says the required runway is 2,900. Okay, so I, I did not consider that this runway needed to be 2,900. I thought it was already that long. How long is it right now? 2,250, okay. Ooh, shit. I made a mistake. What other, what airplane to this Oh, okay. I might have to, sorry to do this to you guys, but that's, but we made a mistake because I cannot extend it. I already have this rail line built here. I don't want to delete it. So let's just withdraw everything. And let's do these, the smaller airplane, the A320, because it needs a runway of only 2,100. So we'll just do what we did earlier. Line seven, this one is very low. We'll get two of them. Oh, wait. Um, we'll change it to line seven. Two of those. Buy some more. So that's the A320 high density. And then we'll just do the regular A320, which is some economy class, some first class. Change it to line seven. Let's do three of those. Okay. So now we have these. Uh, this airplane we need to just sell immediately because it's experiencing a little bit of an error because of the short runway. So we'll sell that now. Okay. It's gonna, we're gonna have to wait for these other airplanes to, you can also just click on them individually. Let's just go to depot, go to depot, go to depot. Good, okay, so that's all set. We'll sell them. And now we have these, um, we have these A320s with a, that require a smaller runway on the route. So the demand for that route might be messed up for a little bit because we just sold a bunch of them and, and canceled a bunch of flights. So it might get messed up for a little bit, but I think we're good now. So we have these higher density airplanes on the route now. Okay, see they're gonna wait for one after another to go. We'll follow this airplane. It's flying across the ocean. It has to wait for, it has to wait a while to land. Sorry if I was making everybody dizzy. Uh, okay, so these airplanes. Let's see what happens. See, we have, we just sent five airplanes on the route, but they have to wait for each one at the, terminal to finish loading. So let's see if it lets this one land, if they will pass each other, otherwise it might have an issue. Okay, great. So now it taxi to the end, takes off, the other one lands, and it's just going to wait. Um, but by the time they're all done loading, it'll all be staggered enough so that we can, so that they'll, they won't have to wait. Um, they will have to wait at the terminal, but they won't have to wait on the runway. Okay, so that is how we upgraded that line. Now, uh, let's, sorry if you came here for the actual airport building video, 
um, portion. So now let's get around to that. So let's build a new airport between the main hub and these two cities. Put it on normal time. Let's put the airport right here and let's make a train line between these two cities and the airport. I think that'll be really cool. The train lines definitely help attract passengers. You can see that we are in debt right now, but if we go to our finances, we have a huge line of credit of $10 million, and that is way more than enough. So we can really just build whatever we want. We're gonna build some tunnels. We're gonna build some really interesting stuff. So let's do a 3,000 meter long runway. So we that's um, only 2,375 meters. So we can, we can just build that and then we can extend it. So let's ex extend it this way. It doesn't really matter. We have to raise the land. And then if we drag the tool over it, it says 3,000 meters. So let's build a cool airport, concrete taxiway. Let's go like this. These kinds of taxiways will help the airport it will help airplanes um, get to their uh, gates faster because they won't have to wait for each other. Sometimes they get stuck. That might happen later. And we'll just build some... Let's make it look like a real airport. <laughs> Why not, right? Okay. Let's put five gates down. We can use... We have an option for an apron with a, a flat apron or an apron with a jetway. They're both the same price. And you have to build the apron first. That is the first part of building the airport, is the apron. That actually creates the station. And then we'll put the terminal building, like so. And the last step is a control tower. So that will go, let's just put it right there. And we have these other cool um, parts of the airport. Like there's a terminal with control tower. If you're building like a small airport, you can save some money by building this. Then there's a terminal building entrance. It's not necessary to build this, but it just looks it just looks nice. See, it looks like a real airport. So we'll just go like that. That is far more capacity than we actually need. 1,260 passengers. I don't think we'll, we're going to have more than that. Let's move the highway a little bit. Or maybe we don't have to. No. Um, no, let's not bother with that. Okay, so we have the airport. Now, oh, let's finish it up a little bit. Now, let's build the train line. We could build a bus line, and if you're just starting an air network, like at the beginning of the game, definitely use a bus line, don't use a train line. Let's do a double station, a two-track station. If we build a, um, what we can do is we can just build a station. We could just build a station and it creates a new station name because these two stations are not touching the airport and the actual station. And that's fine. People will still transfer between the two. But just for simplicity's sake and to make it kind of easier to manage, we'll put a bus stop right there on the road. And then we'll put, then we'll build the actual station. We'll make it four tiles long for a four tile long train like that. Okay. Wait, we should probably go like this. J to delete. Um, what I wanna do with this city is it has a attraction called a hospital. Um, it has a visitor, it has a very high visitor demand of 628, so we definitely want the train to connect directly to the hospital. That would be ideal. Um, so what we'll do is this. We're going to delete some of these, like, um, industrial sites. And we'll build a tunnel. So we'll go to landscape tools, build artificial slopes. If we use... To build a tunnel right here, we would want to use the, the down key, the D key, which would raise and lower land. D lowers, and we would just go that, that. And it has to be a double slope tile like that to build a tunnel entrance. 
But since we have roads and other things right here, we can't do that because it affects, because when we use the D key, it affects the adjacent tile. But if we use the build artificial slope, it lower or raise, it only affects the single tile. So we can build like so. And we'll put a double, you know, says times two build artificial slope. It's a steep slope is what the X2 means. And there. And then we'll go to railway tools and we have a couple different tunnels. We have a reinforced concrete tunnel and it says we have a maximum speed of 160 kilometers an hour. There's also the high speed rail tunnel with 300 kilometers an hour. And unfortunately we don't have any need for that right now. It would be fun to build a high speed line, but we're only gonna use 160 miles an hour. So let's click on it, control click. If you do not control click, it'll build a straight tunnel right through this. But um, if we want to have turns and stuff inside the tunnel, like maybe we want it to start here, but come out over here, um, then we would just want to do control click. So we'll control click right there. And let's see, where's it gonna come out? We'll find out where it comes out by looking right here. So let's look at the coordinates, 469, 394, 469. So if we go straight, it's gonna be on the 469 axis and it is, it is at uh, elevation level one. So let's go over to here, let's find 469. Oh, it's right there, 46. 469 is right there. So it's going to be a pretty tight turn. Oh, wait, sorry. It has to be at this level. So we'll go down, 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 down. And now, reinforced tunnel, like so. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of doing this kind of loose because I have a ton of money. But if you are short on money and you're actually like playing, you know, to, to save money. Uh, like if you're starting the game, then you're going to want to plan this a lot better than I'm doing it. I'm just kind of winging it. So we'll just drag the tunnel. It's going to cost $104,000. There we go. There's our, there's our tunnel. We'll click on the tile. It says we have a max speed of 160 mile, kilometers an hour, axle load of 22 tons. Ax the electric trains are very light, so we don't have to really worry about the axle load. Let's delete the station that we already built. Let's kind of start over. Sorry, it was kind of a poorly planned, but you, you'll appreciate why we're gonna do that. And now let's um, go to elevated waste supports and let's click on concrete viaduct elevated support. Because ideally we wanna make the um, we want to make our track as straight as possible. Okay, so let's go to, um, let's pick a track that is 160 kilometers an hour and let's go like that. Delete, concrete, and there. And then we'll go like this and like this. Yeah, let's do that. And then here, go like that. See? And now, put a thing there, put a bus stop there, and then we can build a station, the actual station. Um, and now one thing to consider is if you click on the station and you go to details, it'll tell you the transshipment time. So the transshipment time is only six minutes. Um, but if you make a very large, like spread out station, um, it sh it'll, it'll go up and that'll affect um, how many people want to use it. Not by a lot, but it's just something to consider. Okay, make the track go this way. But actually let's finish, let's finish right over here. Okay, so because the train is gonna be very fast, relatively fast. I'm only going to make it single line for the most part. We will have a station there. And then let's have a station in town. And it would be ideal to have it close to the cricket ground, but we also want to have it, you know, kind of around all this other stuff. Um, so, 
oh, it's not going to let me delete that because this is a public building. It's the library. Who needs a library? Am I right? Just kidding. Um, remember, we can get away with um, deleting these ro these roads by just building our own. See? And now we can build a station right there. Okay. There we go. And the reason I just did that as a higher level is because I kind of just want this all to be one level just for simplicity's sake. Um, if you're trying to save money, of course, it'll just, it makes sense to go down because you have to pay more money to build the viaduct, obviously. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's put a train platform right there. Put a train platform right there. And see this now, because it's in really close proximity to the hospital, it is called the Hospital Railway Station. And it's only a minute and 48 seconds, a minute and 48 seconds to from the hospital to the station. That's great. And then maybe later we will build up a tram line from here, a people mover or something from the uh, cricket ground to the station because it's too far for people to walk. OK, so it has a tunnel. We have that right here. What we're going to do is this. We're going to set up the signals. We're going to use a mechanical signal box, and we're going to use the token block signals, which means only one train is allowed on that section of track. So once a train passes it going this way, that means that no other train can go on it until it comes through the other token block. Once it, once it goes here, goes to the other city, comes back, goes past this one, then this one will turn green. And let's plan our station in this city. So I'm thinking we're just going to do one station in the city. We're going to do it under the hospital, which will be pretty cool. Give us an opportunity again to build a tunnel. And maybe we'll use these tiles to build the station building, because we do need a station building if we're building underground. Um, let's build... Okay, since we're gonna let's since we're gonna do that, um, let's think about how we want the train to approach. I think we want to we want it to be as smooth as possible with as few turns as possible. So I'm thinking we will go like this. Because ideally, because the train, because the track is 160 kilometers an hour, we don't want the we want the train to travel consistently at 160 kilometers an hour. So any like sharp turns, it'll have to slow down. So let's go like that. Now, something you can do in Simutrans is you can cross a diagonal road. You do that by holding control, click, drag once, click, drag twice, click, drag three times. See, and it, it looks wonky, but the cars can travel across it and the trains can travel across it. It's, I think they made it, they did this on purpose, but it is kind of a workaround in the graphics, but whatever. However, um, sometimes these get, these kind of bug out. And so what I like to do, if I have enough money, is I like to just build a bridge a new road bridge across the um, tracks. So here's our road bridge. We go to we go to road tools. We can pick a basic bridge like the concrete bridge. Cost seven thousand dollars. Down key, S for road, like so, and then we will press Q, and we will delete the road because an alternate route has to be built before you can delete a road. And we'll connect it. That's pretty cool. Okay, we'll go this way, we'll go that way. We will have the tunnel right this, right along here. Oops, I didn't need to delete. No, I did. Okay, there's our tunnel entrance. I didn't need to. Hmm. Yeah, that looks good. We could have made this. 
we could have made the curve a little smoother, but I don't know. I don't know. Reinforce concrete rail tunnel. Control click. Control click as it again only creates the entrance. And we'll press Shift U. We go underground. And what will what you'll notice? So if you're using um, the re, the rail tunnel, the regular just basic rail tunnel, it has to be two tiles deep. And so this the track here is at level zero. Up here is level two. So now it is two tiles deep. But see, it drops down over here to level one. And so what we need to do is we need to drop down underground as well. So we'll go to build artificial slopes, lower and raise. We'll click on lower, down, bends it down, reinforce concrete tunnel, and we'll drag it as far as we can. Because in this section where it where it won't let me drag anymore, it the ground lowers again. So if we wanted to make it further, we would just drop it again. But this is where we want the tunnel to end. This is going to be the terminal. So we'll do tube station with passageway. One, two, three, four, and it builds a station. And then above ground, we have to build a station building because the actual um, tube platform doesn't really hold any people. We have to have an entrance, basically. And there we go. And now we can click on it, and it's the hospital railway station because I believe that the hospitals are the most important things to connect because they have so many, um, such a high demand. Okay. All right. So what's going to happen is I'm going to build two trains on this line, and ideally they will meet in the middle at the airport. So we'll just put, um, we want the trains to travel this way, so we'll put the uh, one-way signs so they correspond correctly with what direction we want them to go. Let's build the uh, depot, like so. We're going to use electric trains. Okay, so there's our electric train depot. Um, it's only $10,000, but of course we also have to build catenary lines. I like to use AC. I don't really... So the, as I've explained in other videos, the D, you can use third rail you can or AC in the or DC. So in the later years, um, it is ideal to use AC. I don't know, really know much about it. It kind of just depends on your, on what kind of trains you want to see. They're all kind of the same. And we will buy some trains. Okay. Because we have to have the catenary electric on the, on the depot before we can buy trains. So let's pick a train that has a max speed of 160. This one is relatively new, which means it probably has higher stats, like higher power, um, other, other stuff. This one is the Class 379 Electrostar. Um, it came out in 2010, and it's 2012 now, so let's just buy this one. Like I said, these are all real trains, just like the airplanes. Okay, um, to build the train, you kind of have to click around, sell it, until you kind of understand how it works, but we'll do this, and then we can pick, um, and there. So this is a train that is not very big, but I don't think, well, just for the heck of it, let's make it a little longer. Okay, so this train is three, three, three station tiles long. It has 189 uh, low-class passengers and 20 high-class. So that's a good Airport Express-type train. AC overhead line from there. We put it, we click on the end at the beginning, the portal of the station, and then let's click again, shift U, and then click at the end of the tunnel. And now it's built throughout the tunnel. We don't have to put any other signals because these signals right here control everything beyond their part of the line. Um, we can just click right there and then click here. We've built it, click there, click there. Because the signals, when you're building, sorry, when you're building the uh, overhead lines, it follows the one-way signal, the one-way signs that you built earlier. Okay, so everything looks ready to go. Let's, let's uh, create the schedule. Schedule, 
add stop, let's make our first stop here, second stop here. We want the train, if they're traveling um, that way, we want it to pull into this side of the platform first. Then we'll go on, we'll go underground there. It'll come back. Then we want to stop this up on the other side of the platform. And then it has to also hit this station again. Okay, our schedule is complete, promote to line. And we want two of them, so copy convoy. Now we will start them at the same time. Okay, leaving depot, let's follow it. Okay. It's gonna start there. Okay, they picked up some people. Now it's going back. And see when it passes there, then the other train is allowed on. And now ideally, they should meet in the middle at the same time. And that would be great because then it means uh, a minimal waiting time for people on, for people using the uh, service. They don't have to wait for the other train to pass. So let's keep waiting a little bit. Okay. Ah, so something I noticed is that the train coming from this direction, I don't know what, how to describe the directions coming from, south, east, let's say it's east. This train has to wait a little bit for this train because it, that, it's waiting for that train to unload its passengers, load the, load the new ones, pass the signal before this one opens. But what we can do is we can do the end of signaling sign and we'll just drag it in this direction. Now, the tr the tr this train on the bottom platform, closest to the bottom of the screen, it'll let the train go sooner, see? So that's great. Okay, so now our uh, train service is up and running and let's now let's schedule flights to the airport. So let's go to the map, let's go back, to the main airport. Sorry if I'm like kind of bungling this up. I, like I said in other videos, I don't really plan out what I'm gonna do for the video. And also I had a really strong coffee, really strong. Okay, so let's, um, oh, let's also consider the runway length that we have right now. And we have to use the A320s. Yeah, we, I would like to use the larger one, the larger airplanes, but they are uh, the the required runway is too long for what we have right now. So let's build a a three twenty, um, all all very low economy class. From there to our new airport. Promote to line, and you can click on any apron tile. And um, if, the air, if, if a new airport, if a new airplane arrives, it won't necessarily go to that one. It'll go to any open one, which is nice. It's not that is not the same for uh, trains. Trains will, um, unless instructed otherwise, uh, will go to uh, the designated platform, which is good. Okay, so that's set. It's the new line, line twenty six. Okay, um, let's get, let's have two pl Let's have two all. Um, very low economy class uh, flights. Let's have two of those, and then let's also add three of the uh, higher class ones. So we'll set serves line. It's going to serve the same line, line twenty six. We'll put three of those. So now we have a total of five airplanes on this line, and let's just start them. And now there will be a higher demand on my um, on this train line. There will be a much higher demand because it will be serving the airport. And then people can take the airplanes, go to the hub, and go to any other of my airports. So soon we'll see a lot more people using this uh, airport. So speed it up a little bit. Let's click on line 26. Okay, let's just 
go over here, make sure nothing's all, make sure everything's going okay. Okay. All right. Took off successfully. It's kind of a long flight. About 300 kilometers. That's like Los Angeles to San Francisco, I guess. Okay, it's already full. Look at that. That's great. So our, our new air route, our air route is successful. And of course, we can um, add other um, services to uh, the city right here. I'm having a good time. Maybe we'll do that. So now not only does my air uh, air rail link, it, it connects these two cities, but it also connects the airport, which is awesome. All right, so we're already making money. Oh, and what maybe something we want to do is if we look at the loading times, they're all similar because they all have a place to park. But if we want to stagger the loading times, we go to serves line, we go to serve line, we click on the airplane, serve line, edit line, and we want to have the airplanes wait a bit. Um, we want to stagger them. So let's click on the airport that is not the hub because we don't want them um, staggering at the hub. We want them in and out of the hub as fast as possible because it's very congested. We want them to wait at the other airport they serve. So Tareem Stream Airport, wait for time. Let's just make it uh, 40 minutes. So now I have made it so an airplane leaves this airport every 40 minutes. Now, um, let's connect this city with the airport and I'll show you a little bit about the bridges. So what we know, what I might have covered already, is that we're, we have these viaduct tools and the viaduct is great because it can be built over the first um, level of clear of water, which is white, which is the um, lightest colored water. It can be built on land like this, but I hope you can see it. Um, the water drops down a level right here and our viaduct cannot cross that because it's called deep water. It's, it's classified as deep water and it gets much deeper over here. What we can do, there's two options. We, we can build a tunnel or we can build a bridge. And to build a bridge, we want to go to road tools because I'm going to make this a bus line. I'm not going to make this a, uh, I'm not going to make it a uh, rail line. I already did a rail line. I think, I think this city is kind of small. All it needs is a, a road connection in the late, because it's in the later years. And so we have the option to build a steel cantilever bridge. And it says that we can build it um, 10 tiles long. Now, the steel bridge, the steel cantilever bridge, and the steel truss, truss bridge, um, both of those bridges can be built over very deep water or just deep water. Um, and so let's try and find the closest point between the two shallow water areas. Because what we'll do is we'll have the, these um, viaducts built over the shallow water like this. I think right here is going to be the, the, shop, the closest part for them to connect. Um, let me see if this works. So we have these two points and we can connect them with the steel cantilever bridge in the road tools. Oh, no, we can't, but that's okay. Um, let's delete one end and let's do this. Let's build this artificial slope. Oops. Darn it. Let's try the other side. Like I said, there's a couple of bugs. Okay, so for some reason, it's going to let us build it right there. So you just have to kind of try it, you know, uh, you know, build it, try it, delete it, lose money because you have to, like, delete it. It doesn't let you, like, plan something. You actually have to build it. Well, let's build this slope back. But now we're going to be able to build the cantilever bridge because it has a maximum span of 10 there we go. Ta-da. Very cool, huh? Okay. And maybe what we want to do is we want the entrance to the bridge. I'm only doing this because we have a ton of money. Um, we'll raise the bridge by two because the 
VIDA task to be on um, has to be two, um, two tiles tall. So let's be sure to save it before we accidentally delete or before we accidentally lose something we've spent a long time building, which has definitely happened to me a ton of times. And the viaducts are still a little tricky, so it's not going to connect directly, but we'll do this. I guess I'm going to do this. No, 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 no. How do we do this? <laughs> like I said, you're going to lose lose some money. Um, Okay, fine, we'll do it like that. And we'll delete there, build a slope, and there, now our road is connected to the viaduct. Put that right there. And we will not have to build um, any more long span bridges. We can just keep it with the basic viaduct because we have shallow water all the way to the airport. And we'll just do we'll we'll do like this. Okay. Put the road there. Like so. And of course if we wanted to save money, um, we wouldn't build this one um, level high uh, viaduct on the land. We would just, we would want to lower the road and just build it on the basic land. But since we have a bunch of money, we we'll, do it the cool way. Okay, and so if I want to build it, I want to do that. I just change it to one, like so. There. Now the road is complete. And um, something else about roads. Um, you can earn money. Oops, this part's not connected. Okay, now look at all the cars that are going to be going across it. Where are they? Where are the cars? There it is. Okay. Now we are going to start earning money because we can charge a toll. We don't have to build a toll booth or anything, but we're technically charging tolls, um, access fees for cars to use this road. Um, and if you're playing a multiplayer game, you it's possible to let other players use your railroad tracks and they pay you money to use the tracks, which is kind of cool. Okay, so now a lot of people are using this uh, my bridge. That's great. But they're not going to the airport. It's we don't have the game still hasn't progressed to the point where cars will go to like car parks, like parking rides or like you know big uh, garages that serve airports. Nothing like that yet. I think that'll hopefully come up soon. But so what we'll do is we'll build a bus line. So let's make the bus entrance there, and we will build. Um, a bus stop. Let's let's do the bus terminal. The only difference between the bus stop and the bus terminal is just capacity. Um, but the bus terminal looks cool, looks fancy. So we'll put that there. Um, and then let's build some bus stops in the town. And we will have the bus network terminate at the at this attraction, which is like an old abbey. Um, Maybe we want the bus line to serve as much of the city as possible, so we'll do that. And let's put a bus stop right there, right there, right there, right there. So there's four bus stops in town. The buses will travel and they'll terminate here. Road garage. And at the end, up here by the abbey, I'm going to put the choose sign, which means the bus will choose which... Um, stop which part of the stop it will use. So if there's two buses, they'll each go to one of these. And that's good because we're going to, again, stagger them with time to make the bus service more reliable and frequent. Okay, so let's click on our garage and let's choose a bus. Oh, there's so many options. Um, I don't know if I've already gone up. Odds are you haven't seen the other video. So uh, let me just talk about buses just a little bit. So. Um, outside of cities, buses can go up to like 100 kilometers an hour. Inside cities, they go 50 kilometers an hour. Most of the buses only go 75 kilometers an hour, but there's two 
in this part of the game, in this time, 2012, uh, as you know, buses, um, all vehicles um, come and go when they're available. But right now, there's only two buses that can go um, fast, 100 kilometers an hour. And that's these two Volvo coaches. Um, but the problem is they have a long loading time. And since... You see that? So the year changed, a bus became unavailable or something was added. Um, but I want a bus that has a fast loading time and maybe because the distance is, is kind of short, it doesn't really matter um, how fast they go. Um, so let's just pick these double-decker buses. I like, I love double-decker buses. Um, this is a Dennis Enviro 400. Oh, and uh, this one, this Dennis, this bus has one entrance, this one has two entrances. And so it'll tell you the loading time in the lower uh, right part of the stats section of the screen. So let's do the one with two um, with two entrances. That'll load faster. Okay, first stop is there. Second stop, third stop, fourth stop, fifth stop, last stop. Um, and we don't have to do the back, the whole um, thing because it's a road the bus already knows to um, stop on the left side if it's traveling in that direction stop on the right side if it's traveling in the bottom direction yeah okay and so it already knows so we just put mirror schedule because it's going to go to the end of the line and then it's it's going to go one two three four five six and then six five four three two one okay promote to line um, on six, on stop six, the last one, wait for time. Let's have a bus depart every, I don't know, 15 minutes. I think that's great service. Um, I want to, I like to create Simutrans worlds that I want to live in, and I would love it if there was a bus every 15 minutes to the airport from a fairly far away city. Okay. Okay, I think we're all set. Let's just buy five buses. Let's see how we do. If we need more later, we'll add it. Okay. Let's turn on um, the uh, convoy names. Okay. So we have three planes at the airport. And now, see, the buses are waiting. This bus is going to leave soon, so let's follow it. There's no one getting on at this stop. One advantage of the trains is that people prefer to ride the trains because the trains are smoother. They're like the ride is nicer. But, you know, buses are very useful because they're, they're much cheaper. The capital cost is much lower. Okay, so maybe we have too many buses on the line because we have two waiting and two waiting and then another one waiting to wait. So what we can do is we could sell the bus or we could just build another section of the stop. We'll go like that. There. All right, so now there is a rail service and a bus service to this airport. And if I kept going, I would, you know, add more buses to the line to go to these other cities. What I could do is I could, um, I could actually extend the rail line or add a station and then build a bus terminal for, um, so I don't want to extend the rail line because everything is already set up kind of fairly nicely. But if I wanted to, I could uh, build a bus station in the middle of the city and then have buses come from around. But as you can see, um, there's a bit of traffic. So if I was to keep expanding, I would want to probably build a rail line. And then later, probably build a new airport in this area. Okay, so let's see where we're at. So we have three airplanes waiting. There doesn't seem to be any capacity issues because this airplane is leaving in 15 minutes and it's not very full. So that means that we're uh, under capacity, which is fine. We're still making money. So let's see how it goes. 
All right, it's going to leave the airport with 100% um, first class filled and 50% uh, economy filled. That's pretty good, I think. It's going to fly across the ocean over the other islands. It's going to land at the airport. Okay. All right, looking good. Um, what I'll do is I will put the save game, I will put a link, uh, a link that you can download of this save game. So you can literally play this exact map as it is right now with all of my network set up. You can literally play it right now. Um, uh, I'll show you, like, since you've watched all the way, I'll show you exactly how to do it if you're interested. So we'll go to, um, don't want to look in there. Um, we'll go to, uh, in the description, there will be a link to this page, the Simutrans forums, this exact page, how to download Simutrans Extended. Um, and there's this, uh, uh, post by James Pets. Hi, James, if you're watching this, what's up? Um, he is the, I guess it says he is the project coordinator of Simutrans Extended. Um, what you'll do is you'll go down to Windows, 64-bit only, click here, and it'll start the download. It's really easy. Um, once, it's, once the download's complete, you just open it, extract the file, or drag the file to your desktop, and then open the folder, and then uh, click Play Simutrans Extended. Uh, it'll be like Simutrans 64-bit. And then once you're in there, you'll go... Or don't, don't play it just yet. After that, after you have it downloaded, um, then go, after you have it downloaded and extracted to the desktop, then go to your file manager, go to documents. And in documents, there'll be Simutrans. And go click on Simutrans. Um, download the map, which is also gonna be in the description. Download the map, go to save, Put the map in here, and it's going to be a .sve file. Put the map in here, and then start Simutrans. Go to Change Options, Load Game, and it'll be um, in here. Look at all this fucking... Look how much of my life I've wasted playing Simutrans. Well, not wasted uh, is a better word, but it definitely hasn't been getting a job. Um... Yeah, and then you can play this exact map, um, and you can see all the lines I built. You can make, you can do your own stuff. You can build um, a new uh, air route to. There's a bunch of cities I haven't served. You could build a new airport. Like, like I was saying, this airport is under capac. Is um, the runway is shorter than is uh, necessary to operate some of the larger airplanes. So you could build a new airport, and even just and even uh, just easily change the. Uh, all of the air routes to serve the new larger airport. Um, that'd be pretty cool. And that's something I might do in another video. So I hope you enjoyed watching this and stay tuned because I'm going to make a live stream of uh, Simutrans Extended. I'm, that's going to be coming out hopefully maybe, I'm going to start streaming that tomorrow where I'm going to be playing another map and I'm going to be showing you how to start the game and such. So anyways, thanks for watching and bye.